Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and welcome to the show, y'all. Today, I'm going to tell you this story about these two best friends, Drew and Dave. Drew and Dave grew up together. And Drew, his family was intact, totally intact. His mother and father were there. They stayed married the whole time, all the way up until he was about to graduate high school. His life was good. But Dave, Dave, his family, by the time when he was in the 10th grade, uh, his mother and father were getting a divorce. And they were getting a divorce because Dave's father was cheating on his mother. But Dave wanted to be around his father. So to be around his father, he had to spend a lot of time at the other house that his father stayed with, with the woman that he cheated on his mother with. And this had a negative effect on Dave because his father didn't explain things clearly to him. His father didn't accept responsibility for the things that he did. He made it as though the mother... Dave's mother was the, at fault. He said that he didn't want to leave, she put him out. He didn't acknowledge that he had cheated on her and mistreated her with another woman. He didn't acknowledge any of that. He told Dave that he got into the relationship that he was in now after he left the house, which wasn't true. But Dave had started to formulate these ideas about his mother that were not true. It made him be more confrontational whenever he was at home with his mother being disrespectful because he was blaming her for the disaster that their lives had become. And Drew would invite Dave to come to the house and eat dinner and spend time at their house as much as he could because he knew that Dave needed some strong example of a family life so he wouldn't act that way. He knew Dave was acting out. He had discussed it with his father. So whenever Dave would be at the house, he liked it because he, him and Drew were best friends, but he also at the same time had developed these feelings of animosity and jealousy towards Drew. Start thinking that his own best friend would think that he's better than him because he don't have the same situation at home. And that was the farthest thing from the truth. Drew loved Dave. They were like brothers. They were like brothers. And he would never want him to feel bad about uh, any situation that he was involved in. But see, Dave, let me tell you something, y'all. When you start to develop those feelings of envy and jealousy and hatred towards people, right? It's like opening Pandora's box. When you open up Pandora's box, you can't control what it's going to do to you and who it's going to touch, right? It's not like you could say, I hate this group of people or this person over here, and then that don't bleed over into other people. Because, see, once you envelop and get involved in that type of hatred and jealousy and all this thing, it becomes a part of you, and it becomes the filter, the lens that you see other people through. And then you start mistreating them when they haven't done anything to you. And that's what Dave has started to do to Drew. He started to get more aggressive with him, talking crazy to him, and all of these different types of things, right? And he felt as though he needed to bring Drew down a peg or two. Listen to me now. So check this out. Dave tells Drew, they both got cars now because they were seniors now. They got a couple of months or so before they graduate. So they were hanging out like two friends would hang out, right? But they were in Dave's car this night. So Dave tells him, he said, look, let's go by the store, man and get us something to eat and drink before we go to the park. You know, because they, a lot of the seniors were hanging out at the park and they were going to go down there and see if they could pick up some girls and all of this and that, right? So this is what happened. Dave went into the store. And when he went into the store, he robbed the store. Pulled a gun on the cashier. Pulled a gun on. And now he had a mask on now. But see, Drew's in the car not paying any attention. He's listening to the music, right? Dave is in a robbing the place. Then Dave runs out of the place, jumps in the car, and pulls off real fast. And Drew's looking at him like, what's wrong with you? Why are you in such a rush? He said, oh, ain't nothing, man. We just got to go on down to the park. So when they get down to the park, a few minutes later, the police are down there. 
They're looking for that car. They're looking for the car. So, when the police get there, they get to the car. And they ask, whose car is this? And he told them, it's my car. And they said, do you mind if we search your car? Because he had robbed the place. Now, what happened is this. Let me tell you. Drew, when they got to the park, had gotten out of the car. And when he got out of the car, Dave took the things that he had stolen from the store and put them in his bag, including the mask. So when they searched the car with Drew's, I mean Dave's permission, they found those items and they asked him, they said, whose bag is this? Drew said, it's mine. It's my bag. He said, so these items in the bag are yours? Now he didn't show him what it was yet. He said, but these, so the items in this bag are yours? Drew said, yes, sir. So he poured them out on the hood of the car. And Drew said, that's not mine. Pointing at the ski mask and the, the little food items. He said, that's not mine. He said, you said the items in this bag were yours. So they both are taken down to the police station and placed under arrest for armed robbery. Now, when they're down there, they do what they do. They separate them. They took Drew in one room, Dave in the other. Drew's in one room saying, I don't know what y'all talking about. That's not mine. But the police, they look at that as like, okay, this is what people do. They have done some criminals. I don't know nothing about it. I didn't do it. I'm innocent, blah, blah, blah. And he stuck to that because he was what? He was innocent. But Dave, Dave is playing the game. He tells him, he said, I had no idea that he was going to do that. I had no idea, but when he came back and got in the car, he told me that he had us something to eat when we got to the park and the drink. And he put it in his bag. He said, did you see a ski mask? He said, no, I didn't see a ski mask. He said, he just told me that he had something for us to eat and drink when we got to the park. Now, Drew does not know that Dave is in there saying these types of things. So he's continuing to say the truth. I didn't have anything to do with this. So they they were allowed to, to make a phone call, and they both called their parents. Dave called his daddy. Drew called his parents. Both of his parents came down there. Dave's mother had no idea that this was going on. So when they came down to the jail and they were talking to the detectives, the detectives had told them, we've already talked to them, and Dave has told us that Drew stole these items out of the store. Now, luckily, luckily for Drew, these items were less than $50, luckily. And he had no weapon, right? He had no weapon. So the owner of the store was willing to just let them pay for the stuff, but never be allowed to come back into the store. So Drew's parents agreed to that reluctantly because they didn't want to take this to trial if he ended up getting charged and he ended up ruining his chances to go off to college. But they were looking at him strange now, thinking that, what has he got going on? And they were told that Dave cooperated with the police and told them what happened. So now they're looking like, wait a minute. They would have expected this to happen from Dave, not Drew. So now they still have to go in front of a juvenile judge and make sure that this is settled and all of this and that, and they might end up with some paper. But the, the store owner said he was not going to press any charges, so they were assured that the judge would probably dispense everything and all of that kind of stuff, right? So they were allowed to go home with their parents. But when they got home, Drew's parents were livid. They went off on him, and they told him that he needed to tell them the truth about what happened. And he assured them that he had no idea that that stuff was in his bag. He had no idea. And then they asked him, how did it get in the bag? And he said he didn't know. He didn't know. And then they told him what the police said that Dave said. 
And he stood there and he's listening to them talk this and say this, but he does not believe it. He does not believe it. And he tells his father and his mother for the first time in a defiant tone, y'all just don't like Drew. I mean, y'all don't like Dave. Y'all don't want him over here. And Dave's father, Jake, tells me it's not, that doesn't have anything to do with it. Dave is the one that told the police that this stuff belonged to you. And then they asked him about the ski mask. He said, I don't even have a ski mask. So they told him, look, we'll talk about this tomorrow. And he went to bed and they went to bed. But Drew's parents were in the bed and they were talking. And they were like, do you think that Dave could have done this? And Jake, which is Drew's father, he said, yeah, I think so. I think so. He said, the boy has not been right since his parents separated two years ago. And we got to keep Drew away from him. Got to keep him away from him. Oh, this is going to get worse. So the next morning they get up and they lay down the law. They tell him, Dave is not allowed to come over here. He said, if you're going to talk to him, you do it at school. And Drew didn't understand it. He's like, why? Why do you say I can't have my friend over here anymore? And they tell him, look, you say you didn't do that. You say you wasn't even the one that went into the store. Dave went into the store. Those items came from the store. That mask, you say you don't know who that mask belonged to. This stuff has to be Dave's, and he had to put that in your bag. And they asked him at any time, at any time, was Dave in that car without you when you got to the park? And Drew told him, yeah. And they asked him, was he fiddling around in the back seat? And Drew said, yeah. And he started to realize that maybe, just maybe, Dave did do this. But he don't want to accept that because he don't know why. He don't know why he would do that because this is his brother. So when he gets to school, that day, and he's talking to Dave, he asked him, he said, man, he tells him, brother, my, my parents said that you can't come by the house anymore. And Dave tells him, he said, well, guess I can't come over there no more. He said, are we still friends? And Drew said, yeah, we're still friends. You just can't come by the house no more. And Dave has this sinister look on his face as if that he got away with it. And he said, okay. He said, but what can we do? Can we hang out? You know what I'm saying? I just can't come by the house. And Drew said, yeah, we can hang out. Check this out. So they're hanging out. And now they're in Drew's car. They're in Drew's car. And Drew goes by this other store. It's way on the outskirts of town. And Dave, this time, has a gun. He has a gun. And he boldly, boldly runs in this store and sticks up these people. Sticks them up. And he runs back to the car with a little cash, not much of anything. Jumps in the car and says, let's, let's go, let's go, hurry up. So Drew's afraid. He speeds up. Bam! gets away. They're gone. But he knows that the, they're going to call the police because he didn't shoot them. And that's when Drew realized, man, what are you doing, man? Why did you do that? Dave didn't even say a word. He just looked at him and started laughing. He said, look at this money. Look at this money. And Drew was telling him, I don't care nothing about that money, man. And then for no reason at all, listen to me, for no reason at all, Dave points the pistol at him. He said, I ought to shoot you. So Drew stops the car. He's afraid for his life. Stops the car. And he tells him, get out of my car. Get out of my car. And Dave tells him, I'll get out. I'm going to get out. But you going to jail. You going to jail. He said, you should have went to jail the last time. This time, I'm going to make sure that you go to jail. And Drew said, why are you doing this to me? 
And Dave told him, said, I hate you. You think you're better than me because your mother and your father are still together and all this and that. You, you think you're better than me. But Drew didn't think any of that. He didn't think any of that. And at the end of the day, Drew pulls off. And he speeds home. And when he gets home, he tells his father what had just happened. He tells his father what had just happened. And now his father's angry, but he's afraid for him too. And he said he's got a gun. He's like, yes, he has a gun. So his father does the one thing that he knows to do. He calls the police. He calls the 911 and he's explaining to them what just happened. Now, 911 has already gotten a call from the owner of this store giving them a description of the car and the license plate. And he tells them that that's his son's car and they're at the house. And the 911 operator tells him that don't leave that house. And he tells him, he says, my son didn't do it. His friend did it in trying to set him up. Of course, they don't believe that. The police get to the house and they arrest Drew and they take him in. They take him in. And when they get him into the police station, they're telling him, look, you were involved in this one. Now you're involved in this one. And this time, that didn't have a weapon with it. You're going to jail. And he tells him, he said, I had nothing to do with it. I had nothing to do with it. Now, here's what happened. They pulled the surveillance. They pulled the surveillance, right? And the surveillance camera showed that it was Dave that ran in there. It shows that Drew's sitting in the car playing with the radio, as always, trying to get some music on there. He's not paying attention at all. And then, when Dave jumps back in the car, he tells him, let's go, let's go. Now, here's the thing. Going down that stretch of road in that part of town, they had CCTV cameras. And they were able to see, at a stoplight, Dave pointing a pistol at Drew. So now the police know something is off with this story. Something is off with this story. Because Drew is telling them he had nothing to do with the first one or this one. But Dave is telling them that he did. And he now Dave is telling them that Drew's the one that made him go into the store and do it. He made him go do it. But the surveillance cameras don't show that. So they start to dig and dig and dig. And now they're finding out that Drew and Dave had been best friends since childhood and that Dave's parents had gotten divorced. They're finding out all of this stuff, right? And these people are not dumb. They're kind of smart. They're kind of smart, some of them. So they get a psychologist to come in there to go talk to Dave and Drew. And the psychologist comes out of there. This is rare. Now, this is not that same night. This is over the period of some time while they're investigating. And they're out on bond. And the psychologist talks to both of them. And the psychologist concludes that it's really about Dave. It's really about Dave. How his life had crumbled. And he wanted Drew's life to crumble as well because he didn't want to lose him as a friend. He didn't want to lose him as a friend. He was dealing with abandonment issues. He was dealing with abandonment issues. So he wanted to make sure that Drew wouldn't leave him, wouldn't go off to college and leave him. He wanted to ruin his life so he would be stuck there with him. Now, why am I telling you that? Why am I telling you this story? When this story came to me, right, when this story came to me, the guy that is Dave told me this story. Now, you know, I, Dave is not his real name. But the guy that did this to his best friend, told me this story and he told me that the reason he did it was because he was hurting and he couldn't see that it was going to get better one day he couldn't see that and he ended up for that armed robbery getting eight years got to do five before he can get out getting eight years for that because he was angry, he was upset. So don't take for granted how something that can happen in your household can be damaging and reckless to the kids. 
You didn't think I was going there, did you? That's where I'm going. The things that happen in your household, they need to be explained. Look, life happens, but they need to be explained in detail to the kids before, so that they won't blame themselves, so that they won't start acting out and doing things like Dave did that would land them in the penitentiary. Now, let me get back to the story. Now, Drew, once they cut Drew loose, Dave ended up confessing, telling them the whole story, right? And they cut Drew loose. And they don't nail Dave to the wall. They give him eight years. He's going to do five. He's going to get out. But Drew, being the true friend that he is, he got permission to get on Dave's visitation list. And he comes to visit him to reassure him that he's not going to be by himself. That he's not going to leave him. True friend. True friend. Some of my stories do have a happy ending, y'all. <laughs> this has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and I say peace, y'all. I'm getting so tired.